The selection set is somewhat different. Instead of removing or what's not part of the filter, it puts them into a special mode. We call it the selection set. So all the data will still be there, but some of it has been put in a special little box of selected objects. Um, we can um, do, do it by graphical selection tools. So there is a series of graphical selection tools. We can click on individual ones, we can create polygons, we can draw a freehand, we can um, select by drawing a circle. So these are the graphical selection ones. There are also attribute based selection ones that are under this button here, which creates a We'll cover that in a moment. Um, so, and we can uh, use, if you have a selection set, take this last thing here, we can also clear it out by using this button here. Okay. Um, you can create, so you can combine selection sets by holding down the modifier button on your computer. It's the control button on the Windows and it's a command button on the Mac. There is one little special thing there, that is that if um, an object is covered by more than one uh, selection set, it will be deselected. But this will be well obvious when I just demonstrate it in QGIS. So I'll just zoom in on a small area so I don't get confused. Um, so let's take this area here. So if I use the first one here, that would, I can draw a right uh, polygon and if I right click, they are selected. Which one is first, which is basically the one that you use the last. So we also have the select one, which has it drags a, you just drag across and then select. Okay. Um, if I do a freehand, I just move my mouse around and then that's selected. So those are the tools, the normal select, which you can use to select an individual one, if you can get it, yeah. Or you can draw across and select a series in a square. There is the polygon where you click to draw a polygon. Over there and when you finish you right click and then they are selected and there was the freehand which basically just hold the mouse button down and move around as you wish and they are selected and finally the radius circle where you click in the center of a circle and drag out until you get the size you want there's no indication as I know of how large it is so you just have to drag and see that's where I need it. So that was the selection sets. If I now want to say, okay, I'll start with creating a selection set like this, and then I hold down my modifier key, so I go up, choose the circle one, hold down my modifier key, and drag across the center here. You can see those that were covered by the second data set were deselected. If I now do the same, hold down my modifier key, the control key, and drag the selection on this part here. There are some of them in the, where the two, where my circle covers the yellow ones, they will be covered above, and there are some that is only covered by my new one here. So when I let them go, you can see that the ones that were covered by only one, so those and go on this side, and those on this side, they are still selected by those that were covered both, by the first selection and the second selector, they have been deselected. So that's how you combine several selections using um, the modifier key. To clear, you can always just click somewhere where there's nothing, or you can click on the deselect, so I've got something here, and put the clear selection button like that. So that was using the graphical selection. A typical thing uh, there is that 
this layer, had, you, your layer that you're selecting in has to be active. So you have to click on it first, otherwise the selection won't work. The selection using the expression is um, somewhat like using the filter, but the expression builder is used lots of different places in um, QGIS and can do a bit more advanced things. Um, and it doesn't really have to follow the concept of SQL. Um, you can do any peculiar calculations. The only thing to remember is if the expression returns zero for a tuple, a row if you wish, then nothing is selected and whatever it returns different other than zero, then it is selected. So that's the, the concept of the expression builder. To uh, build the expression builder, we use, use that. We use this button here. You can also use it from inside the attribute table. I'll show that later. And here we can say, okay, I want to do, oh, I may say, before I do that, I think I have a slide. Yeah, I had a little slide here. Um, so up here we have the expression that has to return our zero if the row is not included or one if it is. We have a set of operators. So these you can see this are grouped for their plus, press the plus, it expands. So you've got plus, minus, blah 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 operators. You have conditionals, they are some special uh, case and things like that, pro semi-programmable things. Then you have the fields that you can use. And um, finally you have, um, as before, if you hold down, you, a field is selected, attribute is selected, and you can then press give me all unique values and then return all unique values. For many of the tools, there's a help text up here that you can work on. You can also, um, in the here function editor, you can create your own Python code if you um, know how to code the language Python, because that's what's behind all of this. So, going back to QGIS, here we have it. So we have our different operators here, equal, so on, like, just like we had in the um, query builder. Just uh, rearrange this a bit. Here we have our fields and attributes. So these are the attributes I have. If I click this one here, you can see there is a help text for how the in is used. If I click the ID, if I, there's no uh, help text about it because it's the attribute. So I now say what I did before that I wanted to have all my road number, the house number one. So I could click house number and I can use again all unique. And I see I got the one there. So I'll type the, the ones that you use the most are up here. So you can say equal one. But I could also have chosen equal from up here. There. That would be the same. So house number had to be equal to one. And my municipality code had to be equal to one of I expect. So that was equal and uh, municipality get all on 147. So hopefully it has now written this more or less the same code as I'd done before. Um, I can say select and hopefully you can see if I zoom up to the whole layer I almost see it um, that be in if I expect now I have some that are yellow there 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 
they are all the number ones that have this yellow color. Okay. So I have a selection set. Just to demonstrate the thing here, if I say one here, you can see everything becomes yellow. If I said for the flip, I guess that first do the zero so you can see the difference. Okay, I'll just do a zero and nothing is selected. And if I write flip flip, everything is selected. So anything apart from zero will select. So when you do your use this expression builder, you don't have to be uh, um, focusing on specific SQL. You can do any calculation that will return a value. And if that value is zero, the object is not selected. If it is anything else, it is selected. One important thing when we're talking about the selection sets is that they can be combined. You saw that before, when using the graphics collector, I could use the uh, modifier key, and then they will be related, related to them to the previous selections. Got somewhat the same, a bit more advanced in the selection um, here. So this button down here, I have a drop down, and I can do a select. I can do an add to a selection. I can remove from the selection. And I can do a select in the selection. Um, if I uh, do a remove from selection, at the moment in QGIS, everything is selected. So if I do a remove from selection, you can see, oops, that was not what I wanted to do. I'll just do the one again and the select. And then I'll do my operation, but I'll do a remove from selection. And hopefully you can see now that those ones are no longer selected. So I can use the drop down here to do a selection with no relation to the previous selection. I can add whatever is selected with my new selection set to the existing one. I can remove them from them, or I can do the selection inside the selected ones. So typically if you have selected uh, graphically, and you then want to do the selection inside the graphically selected objects, then you can do this within. So why, what do we use selection sets for? Well, basically almost all operations in QGIS honor the selection set. So if there is a selection set, they will ask, so I only process the selected objects. And the two situations that we really often use that is when we are saving a subset. So if I had my, go back to QGIS here, if I um, clear my selection manually and draw a little selection here, and I'll click my layer and say, save as so that's exporting the layer and choose i choose a shape, a shape file and i'll browse to some folder yeah and call it address select and here you will see that it has this save only selected features so i actually click that one and say okay and you can now say I have a new layer here that only contains those objects that were selected. So that was one situation. Another situation is when we start calculating attributes and we will cover that in a later video. So that was all about creating Subsets, we had two tools to use. we could use. We could use filters, which are typically used if you just want to get rid of something. So we just need to only see 
the addresses in Frederiksberg, and we have a dataset with both Frederiksberg and Copenhagen municipality. We can use filters to get rid of those we don't want. Selection sets can do almost the same, but we have both the ones that are selected and the ones that are not selected. And we typically use that if we want to do something specifically with a part of our data set, such as saving them out or do some calculations on them. So that was all about creating data subsets.